know what they are. Otherwise, you can follow um, protocols and formulas that move you through a creative process. And then finally, focus on your time. So it's focus on your mind and your mental strength and uh, other things that have come up here, uh, your topic, your tools, and your time. Um, you can actually just give you a little focus exercise. So focusing the mind involves at least two elements. So you either pay attention in the moment selectively, like at one thing with a narrow focus, or to a whole scenario, maintaining concentration over time, um, which uh, takes some stamina and uh, pacing yourself. And literally it takes physical energy to be able to maintain focus um, for long periods of time. And so that's why a lot of, um, I had the honor to work in the Mind Sports Olympiad when I lived in England. And um, every year um, I was a proctor or facilitator or host or something at the Mind Sports Olympiad. And the stories that these really sharp men and women that were winning contests, whether it was chess or memory or um, Scrabble even, uh, you name it, all the different mental uh, tests they put themselves through, always had a pretty strict physical regimen as well, um, diet and exercise uh, for, if not their lifestyle, at least several months before the competition um, to be able to focus their mind on the day when they had this very intense uh, com competitive expression of their mental fitness. Um, in focusing on the topic, how many meetings have all of us sat through where the topic was never really well defined? And in fact, you know, the thing about focus is, it, as I just said, it can either be very narrow and specific or it can be quite broad. So, you know, I've done a lot of work in downtown development. You might be looking at um, something specific like the type of material used in sidewalks of a pedestrian area. Um, or maybe the name of a neighborhood or the colors of paint allowed in commercial developments as storefronts and so on. That's Those are very specific focus areas. But you might want the broader view of what atmosphere do we want to provide, what kind of um, um, street scape or parking or gardens or parks or access do we want to allow that fits with the vibe we want to create? How about zoning in a bigger scale? So all those things are a broad focus within the specific focus of downtown development. So um, defining your topic doesn't mean you have to limit yourself to that, um, at, you know, for, the, for, for time immemorial. It means for this creative collaboration session, let's focus on this to get the outcomes or results we need for that. Same thing with time. Um, the time you look at is the time you have in the actual meeting right now uh, for your session. Maybe it's also within that session. Let's say you've designated um, three hours of a morning. And uh, within that, you're going to move through tools X, Y, and Z. And so you want to keep the mental movement and momentum going by moving through those tools in the time you have while you're also adding in breaks. And um, finally, there's the time, the overall deadline. Maybe you need to present a report or a paper in three months. And this is your preliminary planning. You're going to have another meeting next week and next month and so on. So you break down the time into immediate, short, you know, medium and long term relative to what you're talking about or as needed. Um, and then finally, there's the focus on the tools. Obviously, the more tools you have in your creativity toolkit, your thinking tools, your creativity tools, your human resource tools of how to get along with people, your emotional intelligence uh, <laughs> tools, all of those will be really handy to um, help you sort of set the scene and move through the fun, focused, unleashed, and narrow process of the creative collaboration. Now, in the force, we're moving on to O which stands for overview, organize, and outcomes. So you have a macro and a uh, micro overview. So in creative collaboration, sessions tend to be called either as a regular way of doing business or when there's a specific need for new ideas. So an overview at the beginning of the session is usually a good idea because the overall context almost always lays the foundation of relevance for specific contributions, even, even including choosing the focus and 
choosing the tools and look and for the results that you're looking to achieve. So it's healthy to make sure that the awareness of the big picture connects to the issues on the ground being discussed because it's so easy to get off track. Um, so you basically give the overview and take the pulse with the people that are there and flesh it out as key to your subsequent findings. So, um, you know, be, be sure you might ask in a ma macro sense, what are we actually here for today? Um, what do we know so far? And do we still need to know and, um, move through, you know, who are the industry leaders whose views we might need to take into account and so on and so forth. Micro level, um, are we making the best use of resources we have in the time we have, um, in the scheme of things, where do we need to focus our attention now? And I have in the book, a whole series of questions for macro and micro overview, just to make sure you sort of set the large context for the movement, kind of like a rotor rooter moving through a creative tunnel um, to come out on the other side where the light is showing at the end of the tunnel. So obviously there's then the O also stands for organize where you set up and um, uh, decide on your resources. So um, obviously you can do this process by yourself as an individual, but we're talking about it here also as a collective. And the more you are familiar with the tools, the more you set up your environment um, and set up ground rules like playing fully and fairly, being positive, assuming positive intent of the people who show up. Um, it does help to have a facilitator and a scribe to um, so the ideas keep flowing without impingement, that you more or less keep to the times agreed. And if you need more time, you agree to take more time once you've um, passed the first milestone. And you deploy what's called parallel thinking. This is really key to make a non-adversarial creative collaboration session. It's where you lay ideas down in parallel without saying he said, she said, yes, no, that'll never work. You don't judge them at the time and dismiss them. You actually lay them down as options and possibilities at the stage you're in of um, unleashing the ideas. And then when you get to the part of narrowing down, then you can judge and um, set up your analysis of the ideas because frankly a lot of them just won't come up in the conversation because they become irrelevant but you don't want to waste your time um, when it ultimately ends up being irrelevant there's some other ground rules as well but we're going to move on to the final o being outcomes and we're going to tickle around it later in results but um for outcomes, you're looking at results, relationships, and clarity. So results are interesting because sometimes you know exactly what you want. I want a specific product or system or solution that, that has something very specific. Other times the results or outcomes are we need three new ideas to present and consider. Or, um, you know, how what should we be doing with a budget of X? Um, so it's there, it's specific, but there's latitude within it to actually um, be able to um, make use of it. And then the relationships, because it's non-adversarial when you use um, parallel thinking, it's easier to move through in a non-adversarial way, have good relationships, people bounce and feed off each other, even if they agree to disagree, um, and that's part of the game and playing full out. We got down to the R in force for rigor and resilience. We've mentioned the value of mental rigor before, and um, it requires fitness, including staying hydrated during the session, having properly uh, proper oxygen and comfortable seating. You want to build in resilience as well, both mental and physical, to maintain stamina as you move through a very grueling, very often, even though creativity is fun, when you have a serious um, need for outcomes and results, it can be grueling. C for creative connections. Um, I mean, creativity is all about connections. And uh, creative collaboration is an artificial construct that pulls together natural mental functions with core social elements to stimulate sparking and connecting with focused thinking towards outcomes. Now, when that happens, the collective wisdom kicks in the group and you often see sides of 
to people that you never saw before and they end up contributing, which is another C, in ways that they never have before. Now, if people don't contribute, sometimes it's because they lack know-how about the actual topic. Sometimes they lack the know why and they don't want to give their discretionary effort. And sometimes they don't know when to use certain tools or how to contribute. So those are things you can pay attention to as we get into the final word, uh, letter in force E for engagement, energy, enjoyment, and enthusiasm. And of course, we all know what all of those mean. And it leads us then to um, the final comment here about how can we, using engagement, energy, enjoyment, enthusiasm, add vibrational energy and zing for even more impact, either in our thinking process or our outcomes. So that's a quick overview of the force of creative collaboration, five dynamics that cultivate a creative culture, which happens to be one of my books. And um, I thank you for being here with me on Living Legacy Leadership. And I look forward to having you look us up on the SOBRadioNetwork.com under the show name or my name. And we'll look to have you join us next week. And do remember, the life you live is the legacy you leave. Bye-bye.